Hello. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, might as well jump in. Um, so I'm Alex Johnson. Uh, I've worked at Zucha for um, just over eight years, um, and I currently work as a DevOps engineer. At Zucha, we handle quite a wi wide range of uh, site launches and obviously just a wide range of sites. So um, this talk's just going to go over how we approach those um, a lot of the time, and the, and the launches in particular, to minimize disruption. Um, and make sure end users and site owners and content editors have a smooth transition into using their new sites and hopefully giving a nice new um, experience. So um, just quickly jump into a few launches um, that we've kind of carried out. Obviously, there's a few more than this, but um, highlighting um, the FCA in the UK, which is a financial um, regulatory body. Um, they pu publish um, sensitive content and it can inform users' financial decisions. Um, Guy St. Thomas's NHS Trust, um, obviously that provides uh, medical information to users, so it can be quite important. And RBKC, which is a borough in um, London, and again, that can have quite high traffic and sensitive information, which can be very useful to users, um, but can often be time sensitive. So um, this is why we're kind of highlighting that launches need to be um, smooth and be able to handle high traffic from the second you switch over to a new site, whether it's coming from an old Drupal site or your, one of your own sites or it's a brand new site, um, just giving the best uh, experience to um, everyone using it. Um, so in this talk, I'll quickly talk over four steps. Um, so obviously it's supposed to be launching, but um, it's highlighting that the launch starts at build and it doesn't really stop until afterwards. Um, there's always learnings to take from um, everything you do and every piece of work um, that you carry out. So um, jumping into during build, so as I mentioned, this is where you start planning. Um, obviously, it doesn't start at the point um, like a week before a launch. Um, you've got to account for actions that take time. So for example, we work with a lot of councils um, and governmental agencies and stuff, and that can take a lot of time to carry out what you would normally consider simple steps. So for example, DNS switchovers, you need to plan those ahead of time. Um, domain purchases or migrations, um, you've just got to integrate all of these as, as early as you can to make sure that um, you have a smooth launch and that a plan has been built up from the very earliest, well, the earliest stage rather than trying to cobble one together in the last uh, week or so. Um, ensuring the entire application team are aware of key business cases, so this kind of leads into the pre-launch stage, so um, you sometimes find that somebody might be dipping in and out of a project, they might build something, but it might not consider a very key overarching business case of the application, so for example, the, app, the content might have to be as up-to-date as possible, but somebody might not be aware of that, that importance, um, so it's making sure that you're not rushing at the very end of a, a project to um, make sure that these are covered. And accounting for functionality that could impact launch steps. So as I mentioned, such as migrations or um, as I'll mention in a second, CDNs, um, they're not the type of things you want to be integrating at the last step, which is what a lot of people might end up doing because you end up going to end up having to rework um, pieces of your application. So um, yeah, some prime examples of that is uh, you want to get Drupal um, as secure and performant as you can, as soon as you can. A lot of people, it's kind of an afterthought, oh, we're gonna serve this through a CDN. Um, but that impacts how you build the application as well. There's modules to install in those regards. Um, and those modules impact the content editing process. So um, it really makes, step, makes sense to move those forward and get them integrated as soon as you set up Drupal. Um, it makes sure that you're not having to think of them as an afterthought and rework application components. And the same goes for external elements, so trying to get external applications in. So if you're using, for example, a SendMail service, so it's like SendGrid or MailChimp or something, it's making sure that you get that in as soon as possible um, and you're not having to rework or at the very end of the project you're finding it's not quite what you need um, and you look, you're kind of scrabbling around for a new system. And ensuring logging, monitoring, analytics are all in place. So these are very important. If you get these in place one day before you go live, then you have you only have one day of data to work with. If you get it in at the very start of a project, you have two months, three months, whatever, um, to kind of use um, to inform you how your application actually runs. You can work out if it's performant enough. Um, and also if you carry out things like performance or security testing, then these give you insight into that, into how that's working. So um, you're not just kind of, hoping the site works and 
running out of time and then finally it doesn't. Um, and then moving into the pre-launch section, so this is looking at maybe one or two weeks before the launch and it works quite simply. I mean, a, a simple concept for us in Zucha is obviously using lists. Um, so we've built these up over time. Um, it's the type of list you build up with every single project you work, you iterate. So a very important one is non-functional requirements. Obviously, you always build an application um, to acceptance criteria or something um, specified by a client. Um, but you also have these other requirements, like make sure the site runs fast. It's not necessarily an explicit one, but this makes them explicit and make sure that you're building applications to certain standards um, that make the application look good, make yourselves look good, make you happy with the application overall. And pre-launch checklists, these are quite simple again, um, but again, it's just building them up over time. Um, so one of these might be, for example, ensure all non-functional requirements are um, met. Um, but then it's other simple things, such as make, make sure the analytics accounts are, uh, all belong to the correct um, companies. So if it's a governmental ones, it may be that they need to belong, that they need to own those analytics accounts, um, just from a kind of admin point of view, or front end, making sure that there's deployment pipelines so that after launch, people can make changes very quickly rather than having to kind of ask a DevOps member of uh, staff to kind of deploy without, um, well, through complicated procedures. So just making sure that you have these frameworks so that you can support the application over time and that when you actually go live, you're meeting a certain standard. Um, and then another very simple one, you want to work on plans in this pre-launch stage. So a launch plan and a rollback plan make a lot of sense, um, but I've seen it in cases where people might have, say, five bullet points as their plan. Um, we've just found it works so much better when you have a dedicated document that you build up with everybody involved in the in the project. This includes the owner of the, the product owner, this includes um, the people putting the site live, um, and it can be technical, but it also needs to highlight non-technical um, areas. So um, just making sure that people know how much downtime there'll be and such. Um, and rollback plans, of course, um, there's off, these are often documented in terms of this will, this will be how we roll back, but involving triggers and such, so you know exactly when they're gonna kick in. So it could be that you've established a commerce site, can be down for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, do you roll back or do you not? Um, you will have these predefined triggers. And a communication plan as well. So during a launch, um, you need to communicate with people. If something goes wrong, who do you go to? Um, and it's having, for example, like a bridge call, if something, a major incident is going on that everybody knows they just jump onto that and discuss? Or do you discuss in JIRA if it's a minor problem? So um, again, people know who, where communication is expected from and for various issues like who to talk to and um, just making sure people are on hand really. And by the end of having your plans ready, you probably wanna be kind of um, going over and over and just <laughs> iterating on them as much as possible. Some elements to get in there as well is user group impact. So these are things that we've integrated into our plans at times and we found them really useful. So it's making sure that, for example, our content editors affected, are they not gonna be able to edit content for some time? Um, after the launch, where do they go? Do they know how to use that? End users, do they um, know what's going on? Have you communicated that? Um, does the business know that end users won't be able to purchase any products for, say, 30 minutes? Um, and do you need maintenance banners? It's really important from a trust point of view. Um, if an end user doesn't necessarily know a site's gonna go down, um, they haven't had email communication and they see it down, then um, they might lose trust in the application overall. And preparation time as well. After going over these user group impacts and the communication, is it deemed that the impact might be too high? Um, do you put in more time into looking into how you can mitigate that? And uh, yeah, um, is it worth another week before going live to make sure that you can take down 30 minutes of downtime to five minutes? Um, so it's just kind of balancing time before la launch and during launch. Um, and jumping into launch, I mean, this one's quite simple because you've got your plans, so you shouldn't have to um, go over too much, so you go live, and that's the kind of first step. <laughs> um, and while you're going live, you stick to the plan because you've built them, but then you don't stick to the plan as well. So, I mean, this kind of feeds into, um, don't expect everything to go right. You've got plans, you've got scenarios, 
you think you've covered everything, but if you've got a thousand testers, um, users might always find another way to break things. There's always user journeys that you can't cover. You can't cover every single thing. So it's be flexible. And this is where the communication plans come into place. Um, so it's making sure that if something is happening that you didn't expect, you know who to talk to, um, who can make business decisions based on that. And also in that regard, you're building contingency. So if you expect the launch to take an hour, you make sure that the person carrying out the launch actually has three hours or six hours. They have time to monitor after the fact um, and they can jump onto that rather than kind of being pulled onto something else. And um, then everybody kind of being lost. So it's making sure there's a team really there to support them and uh, yeah, everybody's aware of what's going on. And um, yeah, and then moving on to post-launch. So I mean, whether everything's gone well or I mean, you might have had to roll back um, there is that period where you um, have to monitor everything. So um, there's, I mean, it's great building a new application because you get a nice new um, system to use, but you need to look at how it's using. So this is monitoring from a performance point of view, a security point of view, just if there's bugs, if something's broken, but also analytics, so how are users actually using your application. So this should start really from the second um, you switch over um, from the point of view of Again, for future launches, if you see that the amount of users drop very quickly, then how do you mitigate that in the future? How do you make sure that um, there was no downtime or where you expected there to be five minutes and there was 30 minutes? Um, you can then take that monitoring and um, build it in, work out why that happened and mitigate it in the future. It's just really important basically to monitor it. <laughs> um, also feedback, I mean, monitor feedback. So if you have a feedback form, for example, um, start taking that from the very start, but this can also be an indicator of issues in the actual application. Have you got a feedback form which isn't getting any feedback? It's just having a real awareness as to how it's using. If it's not getting feedback, does that indicate that emails aren't working or that those forms aren't working? So um, rather than just jumping onto another piece of work, keep looking at the application and keep monitoring. Um, and from that monitoring and the event overall, um, so carry, a, ca carry out a retro meeting. So this, I mean, obviously it should be carried out on the project overall, but it should be carried out on the launch as well. How can you improve? So it might have gone absolutely great, but you might have identified somewhere where you can speed it up in the future. Um, you might have identified somewhere where, um, I don't know, uh, you can handle more users uh, straight off the bat or you can auto scale. Um, and it's just identifying those, having everyone in the team, um, giving their feedback and uh, working out what can be improved. And um, don't repeat the same mistakes. So if something came across, something happened that you didn't expect or that you, you didn't plan for, build that into your next plan. Again, it comes up, it's iterate. Um, and I mean, those uh, checklists I outlined earlier, like I'd say five years ago, they were 20 points to check, now they're 100, so it's just building them up and making sure uh, you have a real good framework to improve overall. Um, and then, I mean, quite easily, <laughs> um, you need to have a little party after. I mean, um, whether this is just a little bit of downtime or um, a little team get together, it's always good to kind of relax. Um, it can be quite a stressful time going through this pre-launch time all the way till after, so um, it is basically just being careful and making sure that you um, decompress a little bit. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Thank you, Alex. Ooh, thanks. Thank you very much.